Satsangatva Nisangatva Nisangatva Unintended. A flower blossoms with no intent. All who have a nose for fragrance shall enjoy this unintended permeation of pleasure. A fruit ripens not to give us sweetness, but just a sweet packaging of its seed. The seed that has the potential to make the whole earth green. May you blossom to your fullest, not to serve or sacrifice, but fulfilling life's longing for itself. A blossoming of your being shall bring unintended blessedness to all. in continuation of uh, the Netflix serial. <clears throat> well, boredom is definitely not an existential thing. Boredom is a psychological thing, depends what you're doing in here. If lousy things are happening in your head, you will be bored. If you sit here and think of wonderful things, you will be invigorated. <laughs> so boredom is a psychological process. In many, many ways, we have said this, this is your drama. If you are going, getting bored with your drama, can you imagine the plight of others who are stuck with you for these three weeks? Earlier, there were... <laughs> there were distractions of various kind. These distractions, we called it as work, we called it as shopping, we called it as 
other social responsibilities. Now, uh, people are stuck with your drama. You can't close your drama, I know that. But at least like television channels, they all go for a very frequent break. It's not a bathroom break, it's an advertising, commercial break. But they're getting a break every few minutes, every few minutes. Just do that for your drama. Every few minutes, just stop it. Every ten minutes, take a two-minute break from your drama. Oh, you'll do something very fantastic with yourself. But how, how, how? So just stop acting. If I ask you to act out something, you can ask how. If I say, don't do anything, if you ask how, what do we do? But how to do nothing? Well, nothing is not a thing, so it cannot be thought as such. Oh, Sadhguru, you're playing with words and teasing us. No, no, no. Nothing means simply nothing. How to teach that? Tie your hands and sit. It's not going to work. So doing nothing means just this. You're not engaged in what's happening around you. You withdraw your involvement from what's happening around you. Around includes your physiological and psychological activity. Yes. Both physiological drama and psychological drama is gathered from outside. So that is also around you. Just don't participate. Your body says what it says, you simply sit. Your mind says what it says, you simply sit. Not getting involved. Simply not running after some specific thought that you think is good, not trying to avoid something that you think is bad, or not thinking you will put this time to good use and let your thing overwork. No. You cannot think up a new possibility, I want you to know this. You can think up an improvement of what is there. You cannot think up an absolutely new possibility, that's just out of question. It is just that if you are not mired in your own present situation, new possibilities become visible to you. New dimensions of life become visible to you, not because you seek them. How do you seek something that you don't know? If you're not tangled up with your current situations, new possibilities become visible, they're always there. They're not visible right now because you're fully drowned in your own present situations, not even present past situations for most people. Things that happened ten years ago, still it's buzzing. Well, you could have done all these antics if you had a million year lifespan. But even if you live a full life, it's still a very brief life and now this virus saying is going to end you in fourteen days if you don't take care. If you don't take care, this virus is threatening you in fourteen days, we will dispatch you. So it's a very brief life. And it's a very phenomenally sophisticated and complex creation around you. 
In this you're getting bored. This is unbelievable. If you pay attention to one leaf, one leaf, you can spend years looking at it because it's so intricate and so sophisticated. There are ants, insects, birds, animals, whole phenomena of life and the vastness of the sky. If you engage with anything exact existential, if you engage with dimensions which are existentially true, there is no room for boredom because it is too fantastic a phenomena. Because you're doing a petty phenomena in your head and you're only involved in that, you're getting bored. Don't think you're bored of life or people, you're just bored of your own stuff. You're just bored of what's happening within you. You don't even know what's happening around you. Otherwise you would have seen the virus. You don't know. Can you imagine something that you cannot see, just cr can crawl up and go here and... You cannot see new possibilities. Well, a lot of people are going to say, what is this? When we are suffering like this, is this the way to talk? This is what you must decide. If you're looking for solace, you must uh, go somewhere where they will tell you sweet things. <laughs> They're calling you. They will tell, tell you nice things, it doesn't matter, it has no substance. It doesn't have any substance of reality, but they will tell you sweet things. So that today you can sleep well, but tomorrow again you'll have a new question and a new problem. Then they'll tell you one more story. This is like children's bedtime stories. If you put a lot of bedtime stories, children's bedtime stories together, you can make a religion out of it. Yes. <laughs> so, you want a solution. If you want a solution, first and foremost thing is to understand what is the nature of the problem and where the hell is it. If you go to your doctor, he will touch you here, here, poke you here, here, here. But what is he trying to do? He's trying to find out where the hell is the problem. This happened. A young lady went to the doctor and told him, Doctor, my entire body is hurting excruciatingly. Wherever I touch, it hurts. He said, really? Tell me, point out, where is it hurting? She did like this, ah! She did like this, ah! Oh, oh! The doctor watched this and he said, come here. And then he plastered her forefinger and sent her home. So, your boredom, you can find distractions on the television, on the net, you can act like you're some kind of a scientific researcher looking up every damn thing and driving yourself nuts in the next few days, you're not, you're not. So, uh, or you can read philosophies, you can read scriptures and talk about it doesn't matter, body is just a, a transient thing, the real thing is Atman, Paramatman, the soul, it'll anyway go and reach its source. But if you sneeze, you get terrified <laughs> 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 
Because sneeze is so powerful, it can take the soul out of you. Believe me, in many people's lives, that's the most powerful thing they have done in their life, to sneeze. Now you cannot sneeze. If you get... if you sneeze, you will be captured and locked up for fourteen days. You cannot sneeze anymore. But for many people, that is the most powerful thing that they have done in their life. Achsi! So, uh, boredom. Boredom means in some way you're seeking death. In some way you're saying life is not worth living. That's what boredom is. No, no, not like that. I was just bored for ten minutes. Yes, those ten minutes you're seeking, you need to understand this. This body, this whole mechanism is structured in such a way, while people will ask, is this scientific, not scientific, it's all right, but this is true, I don't know whether it's scientific or not, because it becomes science only after it is proved in the laboratory. Life doesn't happen in a laboratory unless you're a captured lab rat. Life happens in a different way. It is very important that your consciousness, the way you think, feel and look at life is the message that is going to the structure. How robust, how integrated, how sensitive and how much of a possibility it is simply depends on moment to moment what is the kind of message that is going into this. Because this entire thing is running on a certain kind of software and you are the lousy software developer that in a day you got bored five times, ten, ten minutes each. Those ten minutes you said, this life is not worth living. Message went all over. And the life that you are, the physical life that you are is getting confused. And one of them may invite the virus. He wants to go, why don't you help? or something worse than that. A whole lot of people are constantly creating this. There is no one big yes to life. This used to happen when we were doing the ninety-day wholeness program. This is the first group of people who have come in 1994 here in the ashram. All we have is a thatch roof shed which is threatening to fly off in the monsoon winds. Ha, ah, they don't know who I am. All they know is uh, they're here without knowing why they're here. They didn't make up their mind, they were just drawn here. So they came and sat. So I'm trying to make... walk them through certain things, preparing them for something. So I keep asking, yes or no? Tell me yes or no, clearly. After a few weeks, they said, Sadhguru, it's yes and yes. Don't again ask this, whatever you say, it's yes and yes. Are these some kind of fanatics or nutcases? No, very intelligent people. But experientially they realized there is no point resisting that which is literally the source of your life. There's no point resisting that. 
there is no point saying yes and no, yes and no to life. It's one big yes, it's yes and yes. So when I came one day, there was a... there used to be a blackboard on which we used to announce a few things. They wrote, Sadhguru, yes and yes. I said, okay, if it's yes and yes, things are simple. You must become a hundred percent yes to life. When you say, I'm bored, you're a no to life. When you get angry, you're a no to life. You get dejected, you're a no to life. You get depressed, you're a no to life. You get frustrated, you're a no to life. Like this, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, it's confused. Now, physiology itself will keep you busy for the rest of your life because it's become a problem. The idea of yoga is to become hundred percent yes in such a way that you can put this aside. You can put this body and this mental mechanism aside use them as platforms to look at larger possibilities of life. But right now, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, this itself is a lifelong issue. The ways of the body and the nonsense of the mind is keeping busy, keeping people busy for an entire lifetime. This is good time, three weeks of sadhana time. This is not boredom time, this is not Netflix time. One week, Netflix is over. This is not the time for you to get PhD in virology. You should have gotten it earlier if you were interested, not in three weeks. This is a time to become a hundred percent yes to life. Because that is the way the possibilities of life will open up for you. Otherwise, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, life doesn't know whether you want it or not. Because it's taking every message from you, at the end of the day it can't make out what the hell you want. Make it very clear, make it very clear to everything that is working here, that you are a hundred percent yes to life. But. I'm bored with my family, Sadhguru. I pity them. They're not complaining, but they must be suffering. If you are so bored, I'm sure you are showing it in so many ways, you're not happy with the food, you're not happy with this, you're, you will scream, you will yell, you will do silly things. Suffering is probably happening to other people around you because you don't know how to conduct your silly drama. It's time to address this, that you do take commercial breaks, hmm? Every ten minutes, two minutes break or you don't need that much, every one hour take five minutes or ten minutes break. No involvement with anything, outside, body, mind, nothing. World can say what it wants. See, whatever you think, the sparrows and the peacocks are saying what they want. Let it be. Let it be does not mean ignore them. No, you pay full attention but not involved. Similarly, the body, it's breathing, heart is beating. <laughs> These are not simple things. These are called as vital signs. This is how a doctor finds out whether you're alive or dead. Your heart is beating, your breath is going in and out. How can you ignore such a thing? You should not ignore attention, but withdrawn not involved, very alert but not involved. The same goes for your thought process and your emotion, very alert, not involved. Body, mind and world, I call this BMW. You get out of your BMW and pay attention to it. Every hour, five, ten minutes, you will see wonders will happen.
you will blossom as a being, which is the most important thing. This is the aspiration of every life. Every life on this planet is only aspiring to become a full-fledged life. The problem with human beings is, we know what is a full-fledged coconut tree, what is a full-fledged mango tree. We even know what is a full-fledged peacock, but we don't know what is a full-fledged human being. Time to explore. Virus has given you the time. Hmm? Sadhguru. Sadhguru, this question is from Kunal. Mm -hmm. Namaskaram Sadhguru. I have started doing the practice which you taught us the other day. I wanted to know what is the significance of the practice. I am feeling really good doing it. I was wondering if I can increase the count. Well, if you raise it to sixty, you may lose your mind. If you raise it to hundred, hundred and twenty, you may die. Yes, I'm not joking. I said twenty-one, keep it at that. If twenty-one is difficult, do twelve, that's it. This is like, I gave you a laddu, Sadhguru, it is nice, can I eat hundred a day? <laughs> you don't mess with it like that. When we create or structure a practice, you must understand that Patanjali Yoga Sutras never prescribed a practice. Only the fundamentals, the science of it, but not the technology of it. Technology has to be built. So uh, very appropriately he called it a sutra. Sutra means a thread. A thread is there. With a thread you can make a garland of different kinds of flowers. Some will wear it colorful, jazzy garland. Some will wear something subtle. Or you can put beads on it, you can put pearls on it, you can put diamonds on it. What will you put if you had a string in your hand? Whatever you got, that's all you can put. So Patanjali left it like this. It's a very supreme intelligence. He just gave the thread and said, every master will add what he's got. So the practice is structured and always when you structure a practice, it's not just a mechanical thing, you have to breathe life into it. So a certain kind of practice with a certain number of whatever, now it is a package which is alive, it's a living thing. It is not just living here in the air. If you take it into yourself, it will live within you because it's like the virus. Virus needs you, it can't just live by itself. It needs your cells to get into and then multiply. By itself, it can't just go on, multiply and live in the air. Just like this, the practice is a certain structure. It needs you to live in you. Now you do something else, you're tweaking it to become a demon of some kind. Don't do such things. If... if something is given to you, uh, somebody reads a book and makes up something or what is written in the book they teach you, that is different. When a live process is given to you, just stick to it as it is. If I give you an ant with eight legs, you say, can I put twelve legs on it? Or can I take away four legs from it? What is that? 
It's a live, living thing, you can't do that. That's how it is structured. So, uh, twenty-one times. If you're finding twenty-one is too much, it's leaving you little like that, do twelve. Mm-hmm. Sadhguru, the next question is from Catherine. Namaskaram Sadhguru, I remember you mentioning that inner engineering book is a tool for personal transformation. I can see many changes within me after reading death book. Ooh. I wanted to know if death book is also a tool on spiritual path. This is trouble. Inner engineering is a tool, death is a tool. <laughs> death is not a tool, but the death book has come together to bring an unadulterated understanding of a very important dimension of our life, which is our mortal nature. I'm saying unadulterated because normally it is very adulterated. When somebody dies, normally the words used are daiva uh, dina agivittaru, that means somebody went and sat in God's lap. This is adulteration. Somebody is telling you, uh, they went to their heavenly abode. This is adulteration. They're telling you things which will give you some sense of solace so that you will become willing to die. You must either die consciously because you have completely accepted death as a part of life or you must fight it. You should not uh, welcome it thinking you're going to heaven. That's adulteration. So the death book is structured in such a way, it's unadulterated. Looking at death simply the way it is and its many dimensions. Well, a little bit of decoration we have created so that it doesn't become too scary for people who uh, don't have a discerning mind. Every thought pops up as emotion in a whole lot of people. Every thought drips emotion. For such people, facts of life will be very disturbing. So one way is to walk them through this process so that by the time they come to the last page, to some extent they're little more uh, dispassionate about it. If you think you're going to heaven, you may become passionate about death, which is not good. Passion is for life. This passion is the way you must handle death. If you become passionate about death, you will go soon. Yes, whatever you're passionate about, you tend to move in that direction, isn't it? So, it's very important that the death book should be read in the right context. This is a wonderful time to read it because this is the sort of book that you must sit by yourself and read as much as possible in a day. If you read bits and pieces over thirty days, you may not feel what it is. You may pick up a few facts and tips out of it, which is not the way to read it. You must read it as much as possible like in one sitting, so that it goes and sits in you like a lump 
and then you slowly digest it. Then you integrate death into part of your life because anyway, you are living death. That's a way to read it. So when would ever... when would you ever get two, three weeks uninterrupted just to sit and read? It's a good time to do it. It's a very good time to do it. Mortality is staring in our face. Unfortunately, uh, in countries like United States, in United States, it's crossed three thousand mortality. Infections, I think, have gone 150,000. Spain is racing. Italy kind of slowed down a bit, I think. But they're telling me once again there are outbreaks in Shanghai. Uh, so, in many ways, the entire world's population is right now strongly reminded of their mortal nature. Good time to read the book, the death book, the inside story, only for those who shall die. <laughs> limited market, you know, very limited market, only for those who shall die. We didn't think, but uh, this is the most appropriate book to release at this time. Mm -hmm. Yoga, 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 Swaraya, Bhuta, 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 Swaraya. Shambha, Shambha.